and welcome to Wolf Ridge in the North Shore. My name is Caroline. My name is Robbie and we'll be your naturalist today as we look for frogs and toads. Can't see a lot from the desk though. Let's take a look around. Robbie and I are looking for frogs and toads. Both of which are amphibians. Amphibians are a class of animals that start their life as aquatic adolescents living in the water with gills, but eventually metamorphosize into land-dwelling creatures with lungs. Now, amphibians uh, include animals such as newts, salamanders, frogs, and toads. Speaking of frogs, Robbie, I think there's one right behind you. What? Oh. Here, I'll go get it for you. What'd you get? Look! Oh my gosh, we can see the frog characteristics on this specimen. Carol, why don't we why don't we just go look at Hyla, the education tree frog here at Wolf Ridge? Oh, I do really love Hyla. What a precious little frog. This is Hyla, and she is a gray tree frog. Tree frogs have tiny little sticky pads on their toes, which allow them to stick to almost anything they want. Some important characteristics of frogs that you might recognize right away are their strong back legs for hopping, their webbed feet for swimming, their long tongues for catching all of their insects. But something that most people don't notice about frogs is how cool their skin is. Many frogs tend to have brown and green skin. This is to help them camouflage in the environments where they live. Occasionally, you'll get a frog that has taken a very different approach to life. They can be super brightly colored as well. These frogs are often poisonous, although some of them aren't, but have adapted brightly colored skin just to make predators think they are. Frog skin is also super thin and permeable, which means that microscopic things dissolved in the water can move into and out of their bodies through their skin. Most frogs get all the moisture they need and even some of the oxygen through their skin. Imagine if you didn't need to drink water or breathe as often because you could just absorb it right through your body. But this means that they can dry out really easily, so most frogs need to live near the water. Not all frogs have to live near the water though. That's true, take toads for example. Toads are a type of frog. All toads are frogs, but not all frogs are toads. Kind of like how all squares are rectangles, mm -hmm. but not all rectangles are squares. Frogs and toads are really similar but they do have a couple characteristics that separate them a little. One of which is their skin. Frogs have wet, slimy skin, um, but toads don't. They have a drier skin and it almost looks warty to some people. And that's what allows them to not live right next to the water. Frogs are also known for their really long legs. Toads don't have such long legs and they're more sturdily built than frogs are. Here in Minnesota, we have 14 different species of frogs. They can be broken into three main categories, which are tree frogs, toads, and true frogs. All of these frogs and every single one in the world goes through a really cool process as it grows up called metamorphosis. After the frogs mate, they lay a large cluster of jelly-like eggs. After the eggs hatch, they come out as small tadpoles. These baby frogs live fully in the water and breathe through their gills. They mainly eat dead and decaying plants from the bottom of the pond where they live. As they age, they begin to change. Slowly, they start growing front legs, then back legs and lungs. At this stage, they are called froglets and they look like tiny frogs, except they still have a tail. They can begin living on land now, but they spend a lot of their time in the water. As more time passes, they absorb their tail and gills into their body and soon become a fully matured frog. Right now I'm working on a sound map for my nature journal. I came to Snowmelt Pond here and I just made a quick sketch of the pond. Now I'm writing in little dots of when I hear noises, where they're located and what I think is making that noise. You can also make the dots on your map bigger or smaller for how loud the sound is. And you can also in the margins write little notes about what the sound sounds like if you don't know what's making the sound. I love listening to the different sounds of the frogs and toads. Oftentimes when I'm out listening by a pond or stream, I'm not sure what I hear, but I'll go back home and look it up online to see what it was. A couple more ideas for your nature journal. You can also go out and take pictures of the frogs and then put those into your nature journal or even draw um, the metamorphosis cycle from 
egg to frog. You know, Caroline, this pond is pretty quiet right now, and I'd be curious to see what it sounds like at night and how the frog calls would change. You know, that would be interesting. Also comparing this pond to other lakes or streams around here, if there's yeah. different frogs and stuff. Oh, Caroline, there's, I think that's Lisa Tracy in the what? background there. She's a frog expert. Oh, we should go say hi to her and have her show us some yeah. cool things about frogs and toads. Let's go. Hi, Lisa. Hi, hi. Naomi. It's great to see you guys out here. Yeah, awesome you too. Awesome to run into you. Maybe you all, uh, you could introduce yourself and tell us a little bit about what you do. Yeah, we've just been out here looking for frogs. I'm a wildlife biologist and I worked um, in New Zealand for many years and then I spent 10 years teaching college biology. And a lot of what we did in that research with the, with the students was frog research. We were studying frog disease. This is Naomi. She's my 13 year old. I've been catching frogs with my mom as long as I can remember. <laughs> Awesome. Well, we're looking forward to learning more from the both of you. Yep. Oh, we got it. It's a mink frog. Oh, they're one of my favorites. They're so beautiful. They make a fun call that goes click, 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 click. Like it sounds like someone's hammering way off in the distance, but it's actually a frog making that big noise. Frogs are pretty special. There's over 6,000 species of frogs that we know of. But you know that over a third of them are considered endangered or threatened. So they're really sensitive to a lot of different things. And you've seen that egg, that frogs lay their eggs in the water and there's no shell on the egg. So they're really sensitive to what's going on in the water. So some of the reasons that they're so threatened is because of changes in the water. As climate changes, the water gets warmer. If there's pollution or pesticides that get in the water, the eggs and the larvae, the tadpoles are really sensitive to that as well. Um, and also there's frog disease. So my college students and I study a frog fungus called, ready for this big word, Batrachochytrium dendrobotitis. That's the name of the fungus that infects the frogs. And it gets inside, into the layers of their skin and causes their skin to get thicker. So. Frogs breathe through their skin and that makes it hard to breathe if their skin is thicker. So we catch the frogs and then we have to swab their feet and test to see if they have the fungus. So when we test frogs for this disease, this fungus, we have to test to see if that fungus is present on their feet mostly. So we turn the frog over and then I swab across the foot pads on the bottom here. And I, and I swab what's called the ventral drink patch. And then we take this swab back to the lab and extract the DNA from it and do a test to see if DNA from the fungus is present on the frog. And that's how we know if it's got BD. So 200 species of frogs have gone extinct worldwide since the 1980s. And there it goes. <laughs> And it's thought that BD played a big role in a lot of those. BD has been found in another 350 species of frogs. So we're curious to find out a lot more about it. There's still a lot of unknown to have a disease like that affecting all these animals. Another reason for amphibian declines is that they've lost a lot of their habitat. They like to live in wetlands like this, but a lot of it has been drained for developments or farmland. So there's just not as many healthy places for frogs to live. So here we have a gray tree frog and they're beautiful. They have this yellow underneath their legs that stands out and these beautiful foot pads that help them climb up trees. Also, one thing that's really interesting about tree frogs is they can freeze in the winter. So they take an, a substance called glycerol and it replaces the water that's inside of their cells. So when they freeze, it doesn't expand the way ice does so they can live frozen through winter and wake up in the spring. So frogs and other amphibians are considered to be indicator species. An indicator species means it's one species that's maybe more sensitive to change. So as things change in major ways, but might be subtly, 
we can see how it's affecting the ecosystems by watching what happens with frogs and toads. So frogs and toads are really fun to catch. It's fun to look at them up close and to see their foot pads and to see their legs and watch them breathe. But we want to remember to be gentle with our hands. And if you do catch one, it's good to only keep it for a few hours at a time. If you keep it overnight, they might get a little bit stressed out. So it's good to just keep them for a couple of hours and then let them go. Frogs and toads are so cool, Robbie. Oh my gosh, they go through a metamorphosis. Oh my gosh, they can climb walls and they're colorful and some of them are toxic. And they make so many fun sounds, all the frog calls. Like right now we're hearing a lot of spring peepers in the evening. And I'm curious about what frogs and toads you all are hearing near you across the region. I'd also love to see what you're up to in your nature journals. And a great place to share all of that with us and fellow learners is the new Wolf Ridge blog. On the Wolf Ridge blog, we're collecting submissions of everything from photos of your nature journal to photos of plants and animals outside, maybe even sound recordings of things that you're hearing and seeing. To submit something to our blog, you can find our submission form. It's on the story map for this lesson, or you can find it in the video description. You know, Caroline, it's about that time, and I think we've been sitting at our desk for a little too long here. Yeah, the flies can find us too easily. Yeah. Let's see what we can find around. All right, make sure you join us for next week, Animal Signs. Carol, what is that? I don't know, Robbie. Join us next week as we explore these mysterious animal signs.